The Crows at none and 12. Now, they've had some attention for it, but not like I don't think they would, Kane, if they lived in Melbourne, as weird as that sounds. Because if this was Collingwood or Hawthorne or Richmond, it would be five times the size of the story that it is. I want to get your views in a, in a sec. Stephen Rowe had this to say on Adelaide Radio today, the former player. I don't have words. That third quarter, nothing short of what I call football embarrassment. I'm just losing faith in Matthew Nix's messaging, his system, his game style and his method. This isn't all on him, by the way. I still cannot see what in God's name they're doing and what they're working on and where the improvement is. There's ruining of reputations here and careers, whether it's recruitment, development, coaching, fitness, PPT and the leaders. I'd put a bloody bomb under the whole lot. You talk to the city every morning on SCNSA Breakfast. Is this a common sentiment, do you think, among Adelaide fans? Is there, are the natives restless? Building, Hutchie. I, I don't know that they've got any faith in the people that are running the club to get them out of this mess. Now, when is that going to happen? What's the time frame to do that? And who's leading the charge out of it? So, look, they'll get rid of a few assistant coaches and that'll be the band-aid over the wounds at the moment at the end of this year. But it's above that. And I want to ask the question to Mark Rusciuto and put a challenge to him, Hutchie and, and Caro and Ross. He was pretty quick to name what the other players that had left his club were getting paid. I want to know for him to put on the record what the likes of these players are getting paid because they're all on the list next year. Sloan, I reckon, is on 800 plus. He's got three years to go on that contract. He's about to turn 31. Walker, 750, is contracted. Talia looks done. He had six kicked on him by an unfit Aaron Norton on the weekend. Gibbs isn't playing and Lynch looks to be, you know, towards the back end of his career. That is a massive chunk of your salary cap. Who's made that decision? And if it's good enough to, to name what the players that are left are getting paid, tell us what those guys who will be on your list next year are getting paid. It's yeah. a fair challenge overnight, that salary cap situation with those five in particular. It's 25, 30% of the cap on a good year. They played in the grand final two years ago. Tex Walker was a captain and a power forward of the competition and the star. So I think you can vindicate his money. Sloan, I really rate, I think he's their key leader going forward. He's the bull elephant that you want to keep going. Tom Lynch was in all Australian form. I think Gibbs you could question on his former Carlton, but when you go after him, you've got to pay him more. And Talia, maybe a bit too much. So I don't think but there's that, too that much you can stack up on. going forward, though, those, those five, does it? Like, you can't carry that well, for another two, three years. Well, I, I think the TPP's been renegotiated as we speak, and there's no way they will earn that money. Ross and Kane, that's the first time I've heard a senior commentator in Adelaide actually question Matthew Nix, though. Is that resonant of what, what's going on in your town at the moment? Well, no yeah, well, no-one um, blames Matthew Nix for the situation that they're in. But what we need to see is now some game-day coaching. So, so what do you do to rectify Marcus Bontempelli, who's had 16 halfway through the second quarter, and no-one goes near him? What's the tactic there? What's the tactic when you're rucking against Josh Dunkley and Riley O'Brien, who's got 10 centimetres on him, dominating the hit-outs but lose clearance by 29? What's their ball movement? Why are they averaging the scores that they're averaging and why can't they defend? So we haven't seen anything, and I'll put it back to Ross as well, from Matthew Nix that has shown he's learning the craft 12 games into his coaching career that we didn't see at the start of the year. Where's the and development? What, and what you mentioned then, that, that's more than the senior coach. That's the midfield coach. If it's a ruck issue and it's Bontempelli, where's the assistance coming from? But I've seen some moves as well. I've seen Rory Lead go in there and look like an all-Australian midfielder. So and he has done some positive things and they've been in some close games. But are, they, are they a none and 12 team, though? You, no, I don't think they it's are. It's hard to be a none and 12 team in a, in a modern In this era. competition. Yeah. It's That's, almost impossible. It is, it is how, a broken how? football club, Ross. Yeah. It is broken well, I think mentally to your point, and physically. There's been a number it, of. A lot has got to What would you call them? Issues that, yep. that get the skeletons out of the cupboard, put, put the brush, clean it, which they've done with Nick's, but I think they've addressed the camp hopefully once and for all. Those that want to be there and build this club up, a proud football club. They need to get the workers in and they, they need to continue to draft young talent and senior players that want to be there and, and want to fight the fight. He wants to play a very conservative manner. Is that the right well, that thing surprises, to do? That surprises me. Is he, uh, he's got no pressure on him. I would think... I, I, actually, I mean, I'm terming a defensive coach, but I think Malcolm Blight made a comment. Give, give them some hope. I think David Teague would say, well, you're 4-7 or whatever you are, but you've lost six close ones, but you, you are scoring. I think... If there's any shackles on, let them go. Let, let Tex Walker kick a bag. Let Tom Lynch do what he does. Not a lot think, of leadership in that football team, right? Well, I think that's the issue, isn't it? And, and I, really, that that really was evident grand final game. I yeah. watched that game. They went in favourites. So I thought they went by five, but the Tigers were harder. And the leaders, particularly in the front half, didn't fire.